Gina here from Orchid and Opal Jewelry and Beads, and I wanted to do a little something different today. I've had so many people asking me about solutions for bead and jewelry making supply storage, and I know that can always be a challenge. It's a challenge even uh, for me, and I've been beading for quite a long time. But I've come up with some solutions that have worked for me, and I thought I'd share them with you all just in case they might be something that you hadn't thought about, or they might be something that you would like to try. So the first thing I have here to show you today, and this will be a video that will just cover kind of one thing at a time. I'll do different videos covering different solutions for storage and different ways that I store my jewelry, beads, and findings. But this one is kind of a unique idea, I think. It is bead and jewelry storage in a binder form. So you might be thinking, what in the world? How would I, how would I store in any of that in a binder? But um, today I'd like to show you how I do that and what it helps me organize and the types of things that I use this solution for. So hopefully it's helpful for you all. And since I'm holding my camera today, here's a little sneak peek of my studio area. I'm going to do another video on this shelf storage and the containers within that. And I have another video that I'll be doing here. Here are some of my orchids. I love them. So anyway, you guys, yeah, this is my work area, but let me go ahead and put my camera in a stable location and then we can go through the binder and you can check out some of the ways that I've used this binder as a storage solution. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about my binder. This is a three inch, three ring, heavy duty binder. So you want something that can withstand some weight and a lot of wear and tear. So I do suggest you getting something that is rated kind of like heavy duty or something like that. And then inside is where it gets interesting. And I'm gonna put a bead mat behind one of these plastic sheets. These plastic sheets are technically like baseball card holders or collector's card holders. And they work wonderfully inside this binder as a solution for storage for certain types of beads and findings. So I'm going to have links to an example of a binder like the one I'm using as well as these nine pocket sheet protectors is what they're called. Uh, links to those on Amazon in the information section below if you'd like more information on how to purchase those. You can get about a 25 pack of these sheet protectors for only about like six dollars I think. And then of course binders, you can get those at any office supply store. You may even have something like this in your possession. And that's really how I got started on this idea is I was looking for ways to use things I already had. And I already had these plastic sheets. I already had a binder. So it was a great way for me to utilize items that I already had without having to go out and spend more money on new items. But it's, it's really not that expensive of a solution if it's something that interests you. But you can see, for example, I have different items on each sheet that you'll see. So like this one, I started putting pendants, and I did put them in little plastic baggies just because I didn't want, you know, beads and findings flying out as I was turning pages. And the other thing I will mention is just when you do turn the pages, it's best to try to do it on a little bit of an incline. That way you're not having your baggies of beads and findings slide out. I haven't had any trouble uh, with this. I store my binder straight up and down on my table so everything stays in place. And then when I do flip through it, I just make sure I'm holding it up this way a little bit so things aren't tempted to slide out or fall out. So that's the first page. I just thought I'd go through these pages with you so you could see the way that I'm using this solution. So here's another page. I have some of my lesser expensive crystal beads, and they're just kind of your single pieces, things that are, are great for a binder like this because they don't take up a lot of space, but you really want to be able to see what you have. And I know for me, I'm a very visual person, so this type of solution really works for me. 
So then again, like I have this page here, which you can see I'm doing for like nice check glass beads that I only have maybe two of. So I don't really want to shove them in a bag and then uh, just throw them in a, a big bin or something. I want to be able to look through and see what types of things that I have. Here's another page that I'm using for my pearls. These are all things that I've gotten in various bead boxes. You could even label all of your, your beads if you want, if you want to know where everything came from. Here's just a page I was doing for like single check glass beads, focal beads. This will be a page for cabochons. You can use this for cabochons, rivolis, things like that. I only have one cab right now as you can see. I have another page for my resin beads that we've gotten in the dollar bead box in the past. But what's amazing is you can fit so many things in this one binder. Here's a page for the Swarovski that I have. It's not all that I have, but it's what I needed storage for at this time, so these fit great. Then I have some metal uh, pendants, filigree pieces, just random odds and ends that I don't want to just stash away. I want to be able to see them. You can even use this solution for ribbon, or you could use it for like small pieces of cording. Just tuck them in there. And I use it a lot for connectors. As you can see, I have tons of connectors. This makes them really easy to see. More connectors and earring findings. So really let your imagination run wild on what you could do with a binder like this. can use it for charms. There's some other various metal charms and connectors. Some metal beads and some more connectors. Here's some of my gold jewelry connectors and findings. You can use it for buttons. And then finally, I've used it for tassels. So a large variety of different items that I've started using this for. And I hope this gets you thinking about how it might be useful for you. And I still have plenty of room in here. So I'm at about 20 pages used right now. I could probably add easily enough, another 15 more pages. So, do the calculation on this. 35 pages times nine of these little pockets. That's 315 different sections of bead storage you could have in this one binder. I think that's really good. And when I'm done with it, I can just close it up and have it right on my desk. It sits on my desk just like a book and I can grab it at any time. It's right there for me. If I just want to flip through it, it can provide me with some inspiration. I can see some of the cool items that I have that may inspire a piece of jewelry all on its own. And uh, I really hope this helps you guys come up with another just interesting and unique way to store some of your beads and findings. And like I said, the links to these 
uh, products or similar products will be below in case you wanted to check those out. Please stay tuned for more videos like this. I'm going to be featuring some other ideas for bead and jewelry making storage because it is a big deal. It is a big topic for beaters because we end up with so many bits and pieces of things and we have to be able to access those things and know what we have. So please stay tuned for more and let me know what you thought in the comments below and I hope to see you soon on my next video. Bye guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would also love for you to follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and Etsy, Orchid and Opal Jewelry. Thanks for watching.